Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Defense Minister, General, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Francois Rousseau. I'm in charge of an informal research group which does not appear in your organization charts. Our president, to whom I personally and exclusively refer, thought it useful, if not necessary, that I clarify for you a certain number of uh, issues. You think that as initiates you're better informed than most people. Allow me to doubt it. At this very moment, things are taking place. They are somehow serious enough for the informations and documents that I kept for you be revealed to you now. In a word, a manipulative operation and parallel to this day on a planetary scale is being implemented and will be the final subjects of my talk. As regards our era, everything in reality started just before World War II. Hitler had broken certain taboos, such as taking recourse to occultism and secret societies. The Annenerbe, a Nazi organization assigned with, among other things, archaeological and anthropological research, found this during an expedition to Afghanistan. This flying object is called Vimana, or Astra, by the Hindus. Moreover, during exploration of the subsoil by the Russians and Chinese in 1927, traces of a very ancient nuclear explosion were detected. Certain sedimentary layers had been atomically vitrified 50,000 years ago. The very same phenomenon can be observed around today's nuclear test sites. One must understand that Hitler, thanks to these discoveries which he took highly seriously, was going to open a Pandora's box which no government, whether friend or enemy, wished to close afterward. Behind tragic history, which we all know, lies a theory based on the existence of four moons associated with a four geological cycle. According to Hans Erbiger, founder of the World Ice Theory, the Earth had undergone four semi-global extinctions of life due to the fall of one of these moons. Effectively, as one goes along, the satellite moved closer, gravity changed and triggered some deep mutation of the genetic standard, thereby creating a race of highly intelligent giants measuring approximately between 10 to 13 feet tall. Several tens of thousand years later, the moon crashed, the impact causing a serious rise in sea levels and a nuclear-like global winter. This race of giant was to disappear due to a terrestrial gravity which had grown too powerful and incapacitating for their unusual size. Hitler was initiated to these doctrines and contacts with Tibet in particular were frequent. The Nazis sought contact with the survivors of ancient civilizations, holders of ancient technologies like the previously described Vimanas. One of these civilizations spread out over the entire planet more than 600 pyramids made of stone, earth and even iron. These pyramids are almost all pointed in the same direction, all have the same proportion as number pi and all situated in magnotelluric nodes. The oldest are in Asia. Two of them are submerged, one south of Japan at Okinawa, another south of Cuba. These two were built about uh, 12,000 years ago. I began by this more archaeological reminder for this reason. Our civilization is the fourth of the cycle which I described previously. Yes, I know that might well hurt our pride. We're neither the first nor the last. One must understand that the study and understanding of several recovered prototypes were the absolute priority to ensure Nazis' domination over the skies. The Allies, in parallel, focused on mastering atom and creating the first nuclear bombs. These secret bases were the center of all research supervised by the Nazis. In one of these bases worked Victor Schauberger, father of the Nazis' UFOs. Schauberger headed uh, the Vril Society in charge of anti-gravitational research. He died in 1958 in Texas. While working under protection of the United States on the improvement of his own flying saucers, which have since become American. 
You will quickly understand that 70% of unexplained aerial phenomena are human in origin and in no way extraterrestrial. Once World War II was over and Nazi technology had been systematically plundered by both Americans and Russians, the first challenge was to carry on and even complete the Nazis' research in great secrecy. The program, called Project Rainbow, especially known for the Philadelphia experiment, was the immediate proof. Mathematician von Neumann, who collaborated with Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla on behalf of the Navy, succeeded in accidentally teleporting a Cannon-class destroyer escort, the USS Eldridge. These photos, supplied by Maurice K. Jessup before his suspicious death, are rare testimonies for this unique experiment. In the same time, the first Indo-Aryan technology prototype trials did not go by unnoticed. The military had come up with a more efficient parade than secrecy. At about the same period, Kenneth Arnold, US Air Force pilot and CIA agent, launched the greatest operation in manipulation ever concerning the existence of UFOs. Making people believe they didn't exist was not the right solution and clearly insufficient. Discrediting enemies and frightening the population by systematic misinformation proved far more efficient. UFOs and parahuman belong henceforth to the movies, television and collective paranoia and not to the realm of scientists as it should have been the case. In May 1947, the American Secret Services discovered the existence of an ancient terrestrial UFO secretly recovered by the Russians, which had crashed into the Altai Mountains along their border with Mongolia. Tension between the two blocks immediately rose a serious notch. The discovery was spectacular, and so not to lose face, the Pentagon in tandem with the CIA decided to tell lies and imagine a huge bluff to convince both the Russians and the world at large that they too recovered a new foe in Roswell in July 1947. Of course, it wasn't true, but the bluff worked all the same. In February 1949, just after the so-called Roswell incident, a new foe was photographed and filmed in Antarctica. It was the first photo of this type of a cigar-shaped object. Other appearances were then to follow in one another by cyclic waves. At the same moment, the Apollo program, headed by Werner von Braun, was in full swing, and Dr. Braun in no way favorably welcomed the demand for paranormal experiments, which nevertheless took place during certain Apollo missions. This is the last known experiment on psychic and telepathic amplification as well as detection of psytron particles emitted by the yogi towards the Apollo capsule. But these tests were all eclipsed by the systematic appearance of unidentified objects around orbital flights and the discovery of traces of civilization on the moon. NASA had to face an avalanche of data and embarrassing proofs. The only solution was to put everything under the cloak of defense secret. In 1971, the Jason Directive set up a special retouching service whose purpose was to erase all signs of civilizations or ruins on the moon, especially in those photos intended for the general public and the press. In June 1965 has appeared this, in a satellite report in the area of Deception Islands, south of Argentina, the Russians tried to sabotage the refloating operation in vain, despite the violence of the confrontation. The flying object was finally brought back to Edwards Air Force Base in California. And ten years later, the first anti-gravitational drone using magneto-hydrodynamic propulsion, or MHD, made its debut test flight in the desert around Edwards Air Force Base, where a number of prototypes came into being. 
The Belgians got a small glimpse of so-called UFOs in 1989 and 1990. The incriminating model was a triangular-shaped Astra TR-3B or XR-7, capable of flying in total silence at more than Mach 10. Now I would like to speak to you about another concrete application of such technology. The B-2 bomber, whose development started in 1982. The official B-2 stealth bomber, which flew for the first time in 1989, was to serve as cover for another unconventional B-2 to be built in parallel. This top-secret model used, among other things, a plasma creation system, exploiting the airflow like an MHD generator. This system produces ionization of the air around the B-2, thereby suppressing air resistance while ensuring total invisibility for any type of radar. This nuclear bomber has flown for 15 years now at more than Mach 10. It can fly around the Earth in just a few hours without being seen. Naturally, such military research was to give rise to many commercial spin-offs. Over the last 10 years, we've seen the appearance of dozens of non-lethal armaments like E-bombs or electromagnetic bombs, as well as, of course, microwave weapons and powerful lasers. The US Department of Defense, through the multinational Raytheon, decided to invest a gigantic amount of money in an experimental program called HARP or High Frequency Activate Auroral Research Program. And it was quite a program. Officially, the base in Alaska studies the ionosphere. In truth, the real possibilities of the installation are enormous. Climate manipulations, deep detection of underground base or deposits, silent and remote destruction of any object and, most important of all, manipulation of human behavior. So, in 1996, a Russian satellite discovered in Antarctica the almost intact wreck of an immense spacecraft, revealed by the melting of the glaciers. The ice samplings indicated a crash date some 24,000 years ago. At the same moment, a volcanic eruption on the Deception Islands, the same islands as before, forced the Russian to request help from the United States, given the urgency and importance of recovery of the vessel. In the end, they suddenly dropped it all and evacuated the zone in panic. The device was finally destroyed by the Russians, extremely upset by the situation, which was no longer working to their advantage. No country will have such opportunity again. And this foolish action, as bad losers on the path of the Russians, was only to reinforce the position of the Americans as regards extraterrestrials. If this account has seen somewhat long despite my efforts to simplify, it was absolutely necessary to get to the subject I mentioned previously. The plot known as the Orion Conspiracy. Our research group is convinced that UFOs constructed by the Americans or the Russians will be used to support an hoax attack on the Earth of extraterrestrial origin. The media taking care of the rest, of course. The reason? Once the threat of international terrorism has dissipated, the war economies of the major powers, with the United States at the head of the pack, will need a new enemy in order to still prosper. War on Earth will be replaced by space war against an enemy from beyond. So then, gentlemen, I thank you. A complete report will be handed to you at the exit. As for me, I'll see you again soon for a second update on a quite different subject. Gentlemen.